This is Corey McCarthy, and welcome to a new episode of Fit, Formidable, and Fantastic. That's right. Go F yourself, and happy Friday. Um, in this episode, I want to, uh, well, I want to address a topic that I've been meaning to do a video on for a while now, and that is glutamine supplementation. And um, I'm actually glad I had put it off. Um, but in light of recent research, my own views and use of this supplement have actually changed completely. Um, so that's why I think it's um, a perfect timing for me to do this video. And let me explain the details to you. First of all, what is glutamine? It is a conditionally essential amino acid, which means the body can synthesize them, um, but only under specific conditions can the body synthesize glutamine. Thus, supplementing can be of benefit, especially if an individual's body levels are low. Now, here's some good things about glutamine, what the research says. Glutamine has various roles in the human body. It removes excess ammonia from the body, which is a waste product. Uh, it is um, also utilized in immune support, brain function, as well as digestion. Um, in situations such as post-surgery, injuries like wounds, and the healing of such, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, known as IBD, um, gaining, uh, gaining weight when suffering from HIV and AIDS, uh, infections, um, and periods of prolonged stress, glutamine supplementation may be helpful as your body may actually require a greater supply. The operative word there is may. The research does show strong potential in that realm. Again, because your body would require a greater supply, so you need to meet the demand. Um, it has also been noted that many people suffering from cancer have low levels of glutamine. There's a correlation there. It doesn't mean it's the cause, it's just the correlation. Um, it is speculated that glutamine may be helpful uh, to supplement during conventional cancer treatments. Um, however, of course, more research is definitely needed in that arena. Um, moving forward, glutamine also appears to play a role in overtraining. A study published in February of 1996 in the Sports Medicine Journal found that athletes suffering from overtraining appear to maintain low plasma glutamine levels for months or even years. Uh, thus, adequate glutamine levels appear to actually be an element in keeping overtraining at bay. Now, that is the those are the benefits that research shows for glutamine. Now we're going to get into the stuff that's not quite as pretty. And please listen up, especially if you are somebody who supplements glutamine and spends a lot of money on glutamine. It's a relatively, I want to put this to the side, it's a relatively inexpensive supplement, but if you're buying a lot of it and consuming a lot of it, it can add up. Now, moving forward. Glutamine has continued to fail in research showing any signs of improving testosterone levels, reducing cortisol, improving fat loss, improving muscle growth or power output and strength. Thus, the majority of performance markers in athletes are not really improved by glutamine supplementation. So it's not really that great for performance. Now here's where it gets ugly. We've gone through the good, now we've hit the bad, and now it's going to get ugly, at least for athletes. According to research released in June of 2014, glutamine appears to blunt mTOR. That is also known as mammalian target of rapamycin. Sorry, it's late. I'm stumbling over my words here. Um, whereas deprivation of glutamine appears to increase mTOR activity. In an earlier study from June of 2008, Glutamine was actually found to have the opposite effect to leucine on the mTOR pathway. Leucine activated mTOR in this research, whereas glutamine deactivated it. Um, now, what is mTOR, you may be asking? Um, beyond the fact that it's known as the mammalian target of rapamycin, it is a protein that in humans regulates cell growth, cell proliferation, cell motility, cell survival, protein synthesis, and transcription. Yeah, you caught that one right, protein fucking synthesis. I'm sure you bodybuilders out there are cringing at the moment. Glutamine decreases, it deactivates the mTOR pathway. And mTOR regulates, for instance, protein synthesis. 
That isn't so good. So a supplement that potentially hinders mTOR would actually be no bueno for athletes, specifically in strength and uh, strength training and bodybuilding. So what can you conclude from all this? If you are serious about strength training and muscle growth, I would just forego glutamine supplementation unless you're in a situation where it might be beneficial like you're overtraining or you're in a high stress scenario, maybe with work or personal life or whatever, um, or you've been injured, especially if you've been injured in a way where you're cut and you're, you're wound healing, um, or you have, you're suffering from some kind of an infection. Um, and even still, I would consult with your medical practitioner to avoid interaction with any pre-existing medical issues you may have that glutamine could make worse. And there are, there are a number of them. Um, so, but on a personal note, I have actually stopped my daily dosage of glutamine. I used to actually dose anywhere between 5 to 15 grams a day, usually around my uh, post-workout window. But I have now completely halted it since coming across this research that I am showing you here in this video. Anyway, um, that is all I really have to say about, about glutamine. Um, I, I would advise you, if you're taking it, to stop, unless you absolutely need to, you think you need to, listen to your body. You're in one of those scenarios where you might need it. Um, but again, in the end, it's up to you. Um, anyway, if you have anything you want to add to this or any questions you want to ask, please drop them below. Um, and, of course, I will respond when I have a moment. Um, and and I, I'll see you guys on Monday for a, uh, a regularly scheduled episode. Until then, stay fit, stay formidable, and stay fantastic. See you around.